Hi guys, can you hear me? Thank you, Defa. Uh, da -da -da -da. All right. Okay, guys, we're going to start without wasting time. Wasting time. putting my system together please hi good and you sir <laughs> i'm trying to stream this on youtube already one person has joined on youtube Awesome, guys. Uh, we are good to go. I tried just trying something now. Trying to see. I'm streaming the live without telling anybody. I want to see. Live on YouTube right now, as we speak. Right, see if they are subscribed, they'll get, yeah, they must. Uh, yeah, I want to see. Yep, I have a YouTube link. Nice of you. Okay, guys, uh, let's run through. I'm streaming live on YouTube. If you know anyone, uh, can join. Live on YouTube. I think I just sent the link to you guys. Live stream on YouTube. Uh, anybody? Have... Let's help as many souls as possible. Uh, I'm just doing the whole thing that is remaining. We do acid and base, we do chemical equilibrium. No, we do chemical equilibrium, right? We do organic reactions now, and we do what? Guys, we've covered quite a lot of deep things here. We just need to get things uh, ducks in a row. Awesome. Awesome. All right, guys, can you see my screen? Let me know. Please let me know if you can see the screen. Okay, hey, screen visible. All good. Awesome. Oh, geez, you know, I was going to, I'm not recording. Let's move.
she's like a Thursday. Okay. <laughs> it's been a long week when you are only writing when tomorrow is the second day of the week only. Okay, all right guys, let's let let us begin the race. Always that ain't good. All right, guys, uh quickly let us um let us start the day. Done quite some work. All right, um, quickly, guys, uh, let's get this question done together. Uh, for those of you that were with me earlier on today, I think we did this. But everyone needs to see how to run through this. Remember what we said, guys. Uh, acid and base. There is, there are the, oh, we still have a question outstanding yesterday. We need to do that question. I'll do it at the end of today. All right. Let's quickly run through because as I'm talking to you right now, I'll be thinking of that. I didn't have time to look at that uh, question yesterday, but we'll get it done. Uh, yeah, it's on the group. It's on the group. It's open for all. If you know anyone, they can join the live streaming if they want to. Um, let's just assist as many people as we can. Let me also send it to my school. Right. Uh, guys, invite as many as can. Let me send it to this teacher's group as well. Okay. And the good thing is they won't be disturbing me because it's YouTube. They don't need to in, log in, log in, log in, you know. Everybody can log in on their own wherever they are. Okay. I hope it's working because I can't even see here. All right, guys, uh, let's walk through. Two grams of magnesium hydroxide is reacted. Oh, yeah, I'm actually watching myself. Right, people think. Live streaming. Ugh. Show up, you're the best, man. Okay, guys, going to be a lot of pacing work today. We're going to really work very fast and very quickly. Now, it says two grams of magnesium hydroxide is reacted with 30 cm cubes of folic acid solution of concentration 1,5 moles per dm cube according to the following balanced equation. <laughs> we, did some, we did a question today and they lied to us that it's balanced, only to realize that it wasn't balanced. So it's good to check. Okay. Uh, this one definitely, I know it's, I've seen it's balanced. Okay. Lovely. Why is sulfuric acid considered as a strong acid? When you see this question, the examiner is simply telling you to define what a strong acid is. That's what they're asking you to do. So what is a strong acid? A strong acid is an acid that does what? Ionizes completely in water, all right, to do what? To produce, don't forget that second part. To produce a high concentration of hydronium ions. Please don't forget the second part. It is not a complete definition if you don't give that part. Again, what is a strong acid? A strong acid is an acid that does what? Ionizes completely in water to do what? to produce a high concentration of hydronium. Please, guys, I don't want you to go into the exam tomorrow and not getting those two marks. It's, it's really not good. Zero. Let's not get into exams not knowing those 
definitions. It's very key. And we've, we've, we repeated that over and over again. We even said for a strong acid, we did something. Ka is greater than one. We still did that yesterday. All right. So if it's a strong acid, I said it's going to ionize in water completely. So it's complete, complete ionization. And what are we producing? A high what? Concentration of hydronium ion. Equilibrium constant of the acid must be greater than one. Please let's know all of those. We've repeated that over and over again. Now, calculate the concentration of the final what? Solution. Let's take note of this word. We are looking at the final what? Solution. Final solution has to be what happens at the end. I'm going to run quickly on this. Now, if we look at our reaction, look at our reaction. Just check. It's for T. Now, when the examiner says such things, please take note. This examiner is actually nice, kind of, because calculate the pH of the final solution. I'll add that to it to say 7.1.3. Calculate the pH of the final solution. That would be three marks. Okay, now what do we then do here? Let's understand the spectrum of the question first, because guys, if you don't understand what is written up here, you would not even know where to start. I think that's the major thing. You guys want to calculate, but you don't even, it's like, go and buy me and you're gone. You get to the shelves, what am I buying? That's what happens. <laughs> is that okay? <laughs> so please, read to understand what is going on for those of you that were with me today i think i have another acid and base question which you are not exposed to because i don't want you to get bored right so it says two grams of magnesium hydroxide i know this to be what the mass two grams is reacted with 30 cm cube volume here is zero comma what zero three makes sense remember how we got the zero comma zero three we divide by what a thousand all right and the concentration is what one comma five according to the following do you notice they only told us they mix them together tell us it is completely what neutralized this is one thing you must now know we go back to grade 11 where we do what um limiting reagent and excess how do we get limiting reagents? Compare the number of moles of the two substances. Take note. Limiting reagents, what do you do? You compare the number of moles of both reactants. Let's get a fresh page for ourselves. What are we comparing now? We are comparing... Um, H2, is it H2SO4? Work with me. What are we comparing? Sulfuric acid and magnesium hydroxide. Sweet. Sulfuric acid and what? Magnesium what? Hydroxide. Information, check. It's good to write it out. Once you write it out, you quickly, oh, this is what I have. What do we have? Volume is what? 0, 0,03. What is concentration? 1,5. Already, I have seen what I have. Volume, 0, 0,03. Concentration, 1,5. Here, what do I have? Mass is what? Are you aware that from both informations, I can get to, the, to a common point? And what's the common point? Number of moles. So can we calculate the number of moles of sulfuric acid? What is it going to be? C multiplied by V. And what would this be? 0, 0,03 times 1,5. What's your answer? 1, 2, 3. One, okay. 4,5 times 10 to the power of that, right? But I would just 1, 2, 3. This is still correct. 
moles. Plus 15 times 3 is 45, and there are three digits behind the decimal, you know? Now, this is, huh? I'm saying the grade. Yeah, it's, it's, it's grade 8. Where you count the number of decimals. It is in grade 8. On the second side, come, let, let's move on. Let's move on. On the second side, what do I have? I've got mass. How do I convert into number of moles? Number of moles will be what? Mass over molar mass. Want to work that out with me? All right. So number of moles will be what? Two over. Magnesium is? Plus one, 17 times two, 34. Plus 24, 58. My answer? Zero comma zero. Three. Okay, you want us to try? Three is one, about three point something. Yeah. Uh huh. Four, four, eight, right? Guys, don't tell me zero comma three four. Once you say 0, 0,34, you know what you've done? You've rounded off, right? And we are not yet done with the calculation. So, this is what we have. It means, guys, originally I've got 0, 0,0545 moles of sulfuric and 0, 0,03448 of magnesium. Which one is at the mole ratio now, right? What's our mole ratio? H2SO4. To what? M G O H. Go back to our equation. What's the mole ratio? Talk to me. One is two. One. I hope you see where I'm getting my one one from. It's the coefficient. Okay. So I know one mole here should be equal to what? One mole there. Let's pick any of them. Let's work with H two S O four. If I have zero comma zero four five, how many moles will I need? N. Can we cross multiply quickly? What will this n be? All right, 0, 0,045 what? Moles. That is what I, I would need for complete what? Neutralization. This is what is needed for complete what? Neutralization. The question is that what we have. We have that that's the question we're good. we are asking ourselves I wanted to get the whole idea we would need 0, 0,045 for complete what neutralization but what do we have we have 0, 0,0 enough. no so i would then say we have 0, what 0, 3, 4, 4, 8 moles of magnesium what hydroxide therefore m g o h2 is our limiting what reagent can somebody define limiting reagent for me what is it quickly limiting reagent somebody define limiting reagent for me All right, limiting reagent is the substance that is what? Used up. Limiting reagent, take note, they will test you. In fact, guys, I'm, I'm live now. I can't be saying some things that it's family, family talk. But if it's a family talk, I'll tell you that, guys, this question is five point <laughs> this, <laughs> this is five point this is five point one define limiting what reagent <laughs> five point one what is limiting reagent it's a substance that is what used up and we always start our calculations from the limiting what reagent so we are now going to start our calculation from the limit what reagent. Okay, let's move now quickly. I would go back to my mole ratio to say MgOH2. It is one is to one. Are we okay? All right, one is to one then. 
But how many moles of uh, Mg do I have now? Magnesium hydroxide. 0, 0,03448. That will give me what? M. Can we cross multiply? It means the number of moles that reacted that reacted here would be what? 0, 0,03448 mole of what? Sulfuric acid. When we mix these two, we are saying that quantity of magnesium only reacted with what? 0, 0, out of the original. What is the original that we have? You guys are busy only writing. Please stop writing. You're not, you're not going on. One is to one. The number of moles of magnesium hydroxide we have according to the mole ratio for complete neutralization now. I'm going of the sulfuric acid because one to one. But how many moles of sulfuric acid I need you to walk along like that instead of just writing. What is the number of moles of H2SO4 in excess? What will it be? 0, 0,045 minus 0, 0,03448. You want to give me an answer here? 0, 0,0106 moles is what is excess. But what am I looking for? Concern. Number of moles over volume. What's the number of moles? That is excess. 0, 0, now, what is the volume? I'm going to say something here that is very key. 0, 0, 0, 52. Okay. Zero comma zero one zero five two. Let's all walk through together. Now, what is the volume? Please, I want you to listen to this part very well. I am now talking about my final what solution. My final solution has this number of moles. But what is the volume? There's something actually missing in this question. There's a statement they should have added. They should have told us that, and I'll add it to it. Assume that, thank you. Assume that the volume does not change. Okay, why is my volume not changing, guys? If you dissolve sugar, in water the water become more are you is it is that making sense the water doesn't become more are we good so we are dissolving a solid in an aqueous solution does it that does that change the volume no but if i were to put two volume two liquids together what happens to the volume it changes do you get the whole idea so we're taking two grams and putting it in what? 30 cm cube. So what's the volume? It remains as what? 30. But if I had 20 cm cube mixed with 30 cm cube, what is the volume going to be? 50. Do you understand the dynamic? Solid in a liquid doesn't change the volume. Liquid and a liquid changes the volume. What is my uh, volume 30, which is what 0, 0,03. Please give me a give me an answer. Yeah? Zero comma three five zero six. 
Okay, three, the next number after the five. Okay, zero. That means we want two decimal places. Our answer is what? 0, 0,35. But it's concentration. Moles per cubic what? Decimeter. We are done there. That's the concentration. That's the final. Please check, and that's how you're going to get your marks. If I were to mark this, um, how many marks was it? Eight. All right. For calculating the number of moles um, here, one mark. For calculating 0, 0,045, one mark. Now, for telling me that the number of moles that reacted, because you have now used mole ratio, you get the third mark. For subtracting, you get the fourth mark. Is that fine? Now, for bringing in C equals to N over V, you, yes? That's how we get the number of moles. Every time we're dealing with chemistry, mole ratio, because I don't know that N. Always cross multiply. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. This gets you a mark, seven. And that would get you the eight mark. Bumbled on top. Eh? The thing is, positive marking only occurs if you now take this value and you. So it's not like math where it's CA. You see, if I'm marking math, if you make a mistake here, I'll penalize you, there, but I'll continue. Positive marking says you used whatever final answer, then I continue with that. That's when I get the mark. So if you messed up here, you lost the whole thing. Now you miss math. <laughs> Please let, let us, do you understand the whole dynamics of what's happening, right? Guys, it is not complete what? Once you see that the examiner is not talking about complete neutralization, understand we are going to talk about limiting and excess. How do you get your limiting? You compare your moles, moles by using what? Mole ratio. And your calculation begins from limiting reagents. That is what limits you. Is that okay? You don't have, uh, you have 500 rand in the mall. No matter how many things you like, you can't. What's limiting you? The money. 500. And if you are lucky enough, you have already spent the 500 and you saw something else. <laughs> it's gone. Why? You are, do you see that your expenses is controlled by the money you have. So your limiting reagent determines what happens. And the examiner says final solution. So we look for the number of moles in the final solution. Are we okay there? Please, we need to understand what we are doing before we start calculating at all. Many a times you just see you calculating cancel because you don't understand the question. Anna, ask. Yes. Ask, ask. Let's explore quickly. Ask. Okay, you're talking about here. This is the original. Check. These two react. Is that okay? 45 boys go to a party. 34 girls. Each girl will take care of a boy. They become partners. That's fine. Good. Is it neutralized? No. The boys are in excess. That's what we're looking for. That after we've all taken our own girls and girls take their own boys, what is the result of the final? Some boys are left hanging. Those that don't have money, those that are not using iPhones. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. All right, not people like us. We have iPhone 15 that is not even out, you know. <laughs> it's making sense. So, final. So, whenever acid and base mix together, there's always what neutralization. The question is, is it complete? For us to for it to be complete, 
check for me to have complete it must be one to one it means 0, 0,03448 of this will only neutralize 0, 0,03448 of but originally what do we have 0, 0,04 this it neutralized but it was not enough and called it what a limiting so this one only neutralized a part what is remaining that's why we are subtracting now the one that did not react excess final what solution and then i volume we get our cado always excess of gents now guys i added <laughs> i added an extra question saying calculate what the final so ah, sorry the ph of the final how do you get ph what's the formula for ph negative log is that fine so ph equals to what negative log concentration of what hydronium what iron please don't forget what type of acid are we working with sulfuric acid which is what a diprotic therefore ph will be equal to what negative log two times zero comma where is that two coming from coming from the fact that a diprotic acid can donate how many protons What's your answer here? Comma one five. Remember, it has no unit. It's important for us to get those marks. Let's run quickly as we proceed. Uh, I think we have a second part of this question, which are seven point two. This one is quite straightforward and 7.3 7.2 and 7.3 let's look at it a dilute hcl solution has a concentration of 0 0,1 look guys if you want to enjoy chemistry just like physics in your head you'll be, you'll be by the time you finish you have you've forgotten what you read right a dilute HCl solution has, so I am dealing with what? HCl. What is the concentration? When you are writing, don't even worry about the unit. Zero. Or one five. This dilute acid or solution reacts with concentrated what? Find the term dilute acid. Acid that you're waiting for me to define the way is <laughs> what is it? The first thing you should think of is when you talk about dilute, it has more water. Is that okay? So an acid that has more portion of water, of more volume of water than the portion of the acid. An acid that has more volume of water. Acid that has more volume of water than the proportion of the acid. Makes sense. It's more water than the acid. A question they can ask you again that I would ask if I was an examiner. Do you add water to acid or acid to water? I did explain that to you that yeah, it's acid to water. Just think of it alphabetically, A to W. But, <laughs> but why is that? Don't write alpha. If they say give a reason, don't say, but alphabetically, it's A to W. No, guys, the reaction between water and acid is a very, very rigorous ac action. Is that okay? If you drop, just like saying, good, if I take a stone and th throw a stone in water, what does it splash? splashes water right good that stone is like the acid the first drop of acid will splash water but if you take water 
and pour it into an acid, the first drop would splash the acid. And you don't want acid splashing. It's dangerous. So it's the same reaction. We're just checking. We'd rather splash water than splash what? Acid. But how do I remember? I think alphabetically. When I start, I start from A before I get to the, So it's A to W. Acid to water. Make sense? Okay. Calculate the pH of the HCl solution. Easy. Type of acid is hydrochloric acid. Mono or poly? Dash. Come quickly. What is a monoprotic acid? Uh uh. <laughs> monoprotic acid is one. What is that? Really? I'm not asking for what mono is. I'm asking for a monoprotic acid. So you write tomorrow, mono is one. What are you writing tomorrow? 1.2. Please somebody define a monoprotic acid for me quickly. Come, come, come. Somebody please define. Can't you? Monoprotic acid, please. Don't let's waste time. An acid that donates what? One proton. Des, you can't just tell me one. What is one? One is a number. A monoprotic acid is an acid that donates what? One proton. Diprotic, don't say two. An acid that donates what? Two protons. Thank you. All right. Please, let I want us to give the correct definitions. Can we then look for pH? What is my pH here? pH equals to what? Negative log hydronium ion concentration. Negative log, what is my concentration? 0, 0,15. Give me an answer. 0, 0,82. Look at you. One, two, three. Three marks straight to UJ. You don't even write finals. Okay. Huh? You get this, you don't even wait for finals. You are off on your way to UCT. 7.3. Now, a solution is made by dissolving what? Sodium carbonate. Please, guide, guys, understand that the carbonates are what? Bases. Is that fine? Carbonate. The well, but one is that the carbonate that is not a base is H2CO3, which is carbonic what? Acid. Is that okay? Uh, let me see. One second. There's somebody using the YouTube link. Uh, one second, guys. All right. Sorry, one second, guys. One second. Okay, 7.3. A solution is made by dissolving sodium carbonate. So, guys, it's a basic solution. Substance is going to be basic. And if it's a basic We know it's basic. We are done there already. It's basic. But how do we write a reaction that supports us? We're going to take, take the ions. This is hydrolysis. Take the ions. Work only with the ions. CO3 
two minus plus what? H2O. Can you define a base for me? A base is a substance that does what? Accepts a proton. So can I drop this here for it to accept a proton? What will I then have? I am adding hydrogen. So what would I have? HCO3 minus plus what? OH. And we are done there. Three marks. Because it is producing hydroxide what? Ions. Work towards getting that hydroxide ion. Again, it goes back to your definitions. If you don't know your definitions, you can't even play around. Know your definitions, you can walk around and play the game. It's okay. A base, it must therefore give me what? Hydroxide. Drop that. You get three marks, one on the left, one on the right, and you check if it's balanced. You get your one mark. And I see here it's balanced. Hydrogen, hydrogen on the right, two on the left. Four, three plus one, four. We marks in the bag. All right. Good. Those of you that were with me today, we did this. Ah. We didn't do this. Uh, but let's do this. This is a very important one. Very, very key. Sulfuric acid of concentration 0, 0,4 moles ionizes completely in water according to the following balanced what? Equation. Um, ionizes completely in water. Write down the underlined phrase, meaning of the underlined phrase. What does it mean? When something ionizes completely, we say it's a strong what? Acid or a base. So when something ionizes completely, we say it is what? Strong what? Acid. Is that okay? Done there. Free mark. Is ionization constant Ka value in the above reaction high or low? Come talk to me. It's a strong acid. Is it high or low? Now, come on, guys. We just we did this a while ago. I need I need answers. Telling, what is a strong acid? I'm asking you, what is a strong acid? <laughs> wrong. Because it's wrong. What is a strong acid? Just question we answered a while ago. Under 10 minutes, we did it. I'm going to mess up these two marks. A strong acid is an acid that ionizes completely in water to produce what? A high concentration of hydronium ion. It means that Ka must be greater than 1. It is that information I gave you just some slides ago. There is it. Sulfuric acid, a monoprotic or a diprotic acid? Yes, can you please give me a reason for an answer. Doesn't have two. Already that answer is wrong. Guys, it's like you're not going along with the definitions. We're just busy with questions are repeated. Diaprotic acid, why? It donates what? Two protons. All right. Thank you, Alwandle. High Ka value. All right. Ka must be greater than one. Lovely. And it is diaprotic. Here we're saying high. And it is diaprotic because it what? It donates two what? Protons. Calculate the pH of sulfuric what? acid. What do we know about this sulfuric acid? We know. 
what do you do you write the formula please everybody calculate for me Start by writing the formula and you know the concept I remember I still gave you the formulas yesterday. Calculating, we're calculating, please. We're calculating. Even if you've done it before, let's calculate again. Let's calculate. Free three marks again that we should all be getting. What's your answer? Zero comma. Right. Since it is diprotic, what do we know? pH is equal to negative log. All right. First, we write the original formula there. Then becomes negative log two times zero comma four. Zero comma. That's it there. Again, three. Where is the two coming from? It's coming from the fact that it is what? Diprotic. We get our answer check. You've not even done so much. One, one, th two, three. Already are sitting on what? Seven. A mark for everyone. All right. Let's look at the next one quickly again. Guys, if you learn to do what I do the way I do it, it becomes a bit easy. Elena adds a sample of calcium carbonate to 50 cm cube of excess sulfuric acid of concentration. What do I know? I know information about H2SO4. What's the I know the volume. 0, comma what? 0, 0,5. I hope you understand how I got my 0, comma 0, 0,5. Divide that by what? A thousand. Just do that, you know? And the concentration of the acid is what? 0, comma 0,4 moles per cubic what decimeter the balanced equation is given calculate what the initial number of moles n initial is what we have initially check another free three marks for everyone n equals to what cv what do you have 0, 0,05 times 0, 0,4 what do you have 0, 0,02 moles. Check another three marks. Why is it so easy? I wrote down the things that I have. I can quickly see what's going on that, oh, I want number of moles. And the formula is C times V. Do I have those variables? Yes. Now, the excess H2SO4 is now what neutralized very very important is now what neutralized i see the word neutralized what comes to mind na over nb equals to cava over and i, I don't want to limit you please listen I don't want to limit you to NA over NB equals to CAVA over CB. What if the other reactant is not an aqueous solution? The first question we did, we said magnesium was reacting with what? Sulfuric what? Acid. Let's say it was now neutralized. Neutralized means what? 
N A over N volume of magnesium hydroxide. No, what do I then do? Get my whole idea. All right. But in this case, we can work with that. Let's see quickly what is it that we have. Um, a quick synopsis here on how to run through your reactions quickly. Every time, in most cases, you are given a double reaction. Please check. So in most cases, you will start from the second reaction. Why I'm saying that? Start from reaction. Check first. Let's write these equations down. Please write down these equations. Calcium carbonate plus sulfuric acid. I want you to write down the first reaction. Was this the one that was not balanced, right? Uh, yeah, let's put a two here. Write it in red. So in case they see, they know that. If I write it in black, it will be deceiving them that it's balanced. It's check hopefully yours will be balanced all right are we done with writing the equations please equation one you have calcium what um carbonate plus sulfuric what acid quickly i want to move we're moving after this what do we do about everything mostly we're just answering questions now for organic chemistry <laughs> all right reaction one what was it calcium what carbonate plus h2so4 guys if they don't give you the product by now you should know how to write those products i taught you that if it's a carbonate carbon dioxide will always be what a pro uh, a pro what are we going to have here? CaSO4 plus CO2 plus H2O. Uh, this one looks balanced, right? And second reaction was what? H2SO4 plus sodium hydroxide to give us what? Uh, Na2, there's a two there, SO4 plus H2O. My Jelenas, let's go back. We'll do one more acid and base after this, please. That one I'll give you time to practice. Then from here now. Let's go back and look at what we have. It says initially we have, do you know what we now have is the number of moles of the first one. Let's go back and check something. The examiner says, calculate. I always like to start from there. Calculate the mass of calcium carbonate in this sample. Let's go. Where's calcium carbonate? What do I need? I need what? The mass. How would you get the mass? Formula? Please, quickly, quickly talk. Let's, let's get the habit of talking. Otherwise, I'll be the one talking, but I'm not the one writing. Number of moles is mass over molar mass. What is it that I know here? I know that. My problem is this. What are you expecting? We are expecting that we can use the number of moles here, right? However, the number of moles, the note I gave you, I gave you three steps. I said step one, it is a number of moles that reacted. Just number of moles number of moles that what reacted my challenge is i do not know the number of moles that reacted but i know the original number of moles what is the original number of moles we got that a while ago yeah. all right zero comma what zero two oh if that were with me this morning i'm going to do this in a different way now That is the original. The problem is, 
I don't know the number of months that reacted from 0, 0,02. If I have information, why did they give me this second check? They gave me that the excess, oh, okay, I see. The excess is now neutralized by what? 28 cm cube of A, 0, 0,5 moles per dm cube, sodium hydroxide. Write out that information. Volume is 28. Volume is what? 0, 0,028. What is concentration? 0, Said The excess, though. The excess. The excess number of moles react with that, but not just reaction. What? Reaction. Are you with me there? Neutralization. Okay. When we say neutralization, then we can use our mole ratio. Let's do this. Let's calculate the number of moles in B. As every time you use N equals to CV, it is the one that reacted. So, number of moles of sodium hydroxide is equal to CV. And that is what? Zero comma. Somebody's typing the calculator for me quickly there. Eight times zero comma five, which will give us zero comma zero one four moles. Okay there. Now watch this. So, <laughs> sorry, but yeah, you must check on the calculator. Now what are we saying, guys? It's neutralized. Is that okay? Can I do my mole ratio? For me, I up here. H two S O four N A. OH, what's the mole ratio? 1 is 2, 2. Okay. What's the number of moles of sodium hydroxide? No comma what? 0, 1, 4. What is the number of moles that I'm... I don't know that. What do we do now? Cross multiply. It's the same thing, right? We cross multiply. What do we have? 2N equals to what? 0, 0, 1, 4. N equals to 0, 0,007 moles of which compound H2SO4. Now, this is the number of moles that we used in reaction number two. It is the one in excess. That makes sense. Yes. Just two here, it doesn't really affect us. Right? Now, check here. Check here. For those of you that were with me today, like I said, I'm doing it in a different way. First time I did, I calculated volume, right? Now, you, you did it like this. Okay. Now, we know the number of moles that reacted. Number zero 07 is the one in reaction number what? Reaction number two. So what is the number of moles of H2SO4 in reaction one? What is it? Zero, zero 02 minus zero comma zero zero seven. What would this give you? Zero comma two two zero one three moles of which compound h2so4 this is now i'm here now now i know the number of moles that i is it making sense originally it was 0, 0,02 i used 0, 0,013 i used 0, 0,0 if i add them together it gives me my original 0, 0,02 how can we draw a mole ratio? It is one, two, one. Calcium, carbonate, and sulfuric acid. One is two, one. But I know this. Now, what will this be? Can we cross multiply? What am I going to have? Zero comma zero one three moles of. Look, guys, don't just calculate. Learn the habit of writing the compound so that if you you. 
Now, what do I know? Number of moles is mass over molar mass. Of which compound again? Let me write it like this. The way I usually write, I write number of moles. I'm dealing with calcium what? Carbonate equals to mass over molar mass. Do I know the number of moles of calcium carbonate? Do you see I'm not confused about the number of I know because I wrote the compound, right? What do I have? 0, 0,01 equals to mass over. That is 100. I'm sure we all know that. Carbon is 40. Uh, calcium is 40, 12, 52, 52 plus 48 will give us what? 100. Can we cross multiply? Move just using calculators, move the commas two times. What do you have? 1,3 grams. That is how we walk through a double reaction, guys. Double reactions. I sent some videos. We took some videos while I was in class. I sent on the group. Let's go and watch that. I did a different method. There, I, I used what? Volume. So I calculated the volume in reaction two by using Na over Nb. And then I subtracted from the original. Number of moles again. So there are different approaches to the... Guys at home, are we okay? Guys at home, are we okay, guys? Are we okay? Awesome. All right. Uh, we're going to end this in by, by. What can you do for me here? Let's try quickly. Uh, let's walk through. I want you to write your answer because I want us to mark. Is that okay? Let's try the first two questions. And the first two questions, I am only giving you three minutes because of your writing. Come. Write what you would write if this was the exam. I'll...
time up, right? What's wrong with this time of mine? All right. Define an asset according to uh, Bronsted and they're just trying to make things. Right? What is an acid? An acid is a proton donor. Please mark yourself wrong. Wrong. I'm a Bronsted. <laughs> Please mark it right or wrong there. Explain the difference between a weak and a dilute acid. Don't, in your correct, you're done. Don't think of that they are opposite. They are not opposite. That's what they want to catch you on. A weak acid can be dilute because dilute talks about the volume of water compared to the volume of the acid. Weak talks about the amount of ionization. So basically, define both of them and leave it. Because it can be mixed with water and still be concentrated. Take your oros, for example. You can pour in water, but it's still very sweet. So please take note. A weak acid ionizes what? Partially in, don't forget, you guys are still giving me half the definition. Partially in water to produce what? A low concentration of hydronium what? ions. While a dilute acid talks about what? The more volume of water than proportion of the acid. So please, it's important that we get our definitions in place. All right, everybody, check. Let's look at the next one. In fact, I don't want to read for you. Please read. Okay. I only need one mark there. Done. That one is a matter of reading. There is, there's, there's no chemistry here. So if you are not somebody who pays attention to the words there, you are going to read it and say it's difficult. The temperature rises. That's the answer. And if the temperature is rising, it becomes hot. It's exothermic. We're done. So if you are someone who doesn't, we don't pay attention, you just read. You will be so that, ah, ah, but it didn't give us information here. It is exothermic. Why? Temperature does what? Increases. We're done. I need everyone to get me the three marks. You have four minutes. That four minutes is too much. If you have read that information at the beginning. That child working. That one beside you. Pain.
We're not blaming calculators. <laughs> we are blaming calculators. Aha. Uh -huh. Should be done. Write things that you have, it will always help. Okay, I'm going to stop the time. If you are not getting it after this time, it means you don't know where to start from. When 500 cm cube of sodium hydroxide solution, let's check, is added to 500 cm. So we've got two things. Guys, always learn to do what I'm going to do right now. So it's added to hydrochloric acid. Let's see. We have what? Sodium hydroxide and we have hydrochloric what? Acid. Can we extract the information that we have? Let's learn to do that all the time. 500 cm cube talks about what? Volume. So what's the volume here? Volume is what? 0, 0,5. Actually, volume is 0, 0,5 for both of them, I see, right? OK. 500 cm cube of sodium hydroxide um, is added to 500 cm cube of 0, 0,25 moles per dm cube hydrochloric acid. What is the concentration here? Zero comma what? Two five. Do you agree with me? Okay. The temperature rises. That's where we picked the exothermic from, and the pH of the solution changes to. It means the pH of the final solution. Now what? Two comma three. Do you agree with me? After mixing the two together, the pH became what? Two comma three. The reaction between that and that is balanced. Okay. Calculate what? The final. Can you see my word there? Final concentration of what? Hydronium ions. What are we saying? We are looking for hydronium ion concentration, right? What is it? It is 10 to the power negative what? pH. I gave you this again yesterday. What do we have? 10 to the power negative. 2,3. Put that in a calculator. What's your answer? 0, 0,005 moles per cubic what? Decimeter. Check. How many marks there? Three marks. You get your mark. There are marks that we should get. I will understand if some questions. No, no. There are marks that we should get easily. Let me let me put the word easily. All right. Calculate. Let, let me let's help with this one. Calculate the initial concentration. Okay. What's added these two together, right? Make sense? All right. Let, let's get a fresh page with the same information. Oh, sorry. Let me do this. We are looking for the initial what? Concentration. Guys, quickly, we are ending. I want to end. Let's see if we can end this section at in the next eight minutes. All right. So I want us to reason together. We added these two together. NaOH plus what? HCl. We have in what? NaCl plus H2O. When we combine these two, we notice that the pH is what they give us as what two comma three what does that tell you acidic means we have more what acid than in terms of what concentration what the, what it means oh and i'm glad the examiner gave us that since we have this this therefore has to be the concentration of the hydronium what ions. 
Are we okay there? Now, what are we looking for? The examiner says, find the concentration. Let's check some. How are we going to work this out? Oh, so we know that the acid is in excess. Do we agree? Because the pH is what? Acidic. The original number of moles of hydrochloric in HCl original. What is that? CV. What is concentration? 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.25. Do you want to? 0 comma? 0 comma 0.125 moles. Now, this is the number of moles of the original. Before we watch this, when we added to this, this we actually reacted with some of this I don't know what reacted i wanted to see the whole story this is the original we added base to it right but clearly the ph is base we added wasn't enough huh? okay please think about the ph pH is what? 2,3, which is acidic. So or this is the original without the base being added. We added base to it. What were we expecting? Kind of to expect, right? But it is not neutralized. All right. It is not neutralized. Are we together? What is the pH? The pH is still what? Acidic. It means we were only able to neutralize a small portion of it. That makes sense. Okay. And now, let's check something. What is this? Our final pH has what? 2,3. Let's deal with the final, final solution. Final solution. Concentration of moles over what? Volume. What is the concentration of the final solution? Zero, zero. How many zeros? Five. The number of moles of the final solution? No. The volume of the final solution. Check. This one is good. I'm glad. The one we did magnesium hydroxide, we didn't add the volume because it was a solid that was dissolved in an aqueous solution. But check, both of them are what? Aqueous. We have 0, 0,5 of the base, 0, 0,5 of the acid. What is the volume of the final solution? One. Does that make sense? That you'll be able to see. I'll say 0, 0,5 plus 0, 0,5. 0, 0,5 of the acid. 0, 0,5 of the base. Is that making sense to you? So, what is the number of moles in the final solution? By the way, hold on, I want to ask you something. Which of the compounds is present in the final solution? Is it the acid or the base? It's the acid because our pH is what? Acidic. It means the number of moles of HCl in the final solution will be what? zero comma what zero zero five moles guys we are almost there now if you can see the next connection we are done i'm going to try to explain off writing now please check started with zero comma one two five we ended with zero comma zero zero five does that make sense what reacted? I, I don't know if that makes sense. We started, look, you went to the mall with 1,005. You came back with 25 rand. 
you know how much you spent? How much did you spend? One four seven five. When I when I use money, we you do with that calculator, calculators. So, what is the number of moles? Number of moles of HCl that reacted. What would that be? Zero comma what? One two five minus zero comma zero zero five. One two moles. Remember that what reacted. When I get that, I can then go to my mole ratio. I cannot go to mole ratio without getting number of moles that reacted. So N A O H and then what? H C L. What's the ratio? That will be N. Can we cross multiply? Number of moles is what. But this is my limiting, by the way. 0, 0,12 moles. Oh, can we then calculate concentration? Number of volume, 0, 0,12 per 0, 0,5. We are only focusing on sodium hydroxide. Right? 0, 0,5. What's your answer now? Moles per cubic moment re-watch this particular session of acid and base and the whole idea is not you guys are always in a hurry to calculate think of the whole process okay what end the story it becomes easy to say okay i am going to add here i am going to divide here and i'm going to multiply started with 0, 0.125 we ended with 0, 0,005. What reacted? 0, 0,12. Oh, now we know what reacted. And sodium hydroxide is our limiting what? Reagent. Why? How do we know it's a limiting reagent? Final solution was still what? Or the base. Please let me know if this is okay. I'm moving on to the other content now. Let me know. Let me know if this makes sense. Those of us at home, please talk to me. Awesome. Thank you, Simanke. For those of you streaming online, I hope you're still there. You can also drop a comment and let us know. Oh, okay. Uh, I, you, I know you won't be able to drop a comment now because I didn't something. It was just a last minute decision. All right. But if you want to drop a comment, you can always drop a comment on 0817442103. Let's read from you. Awesome. Guys, can we move on quickly? Okay, let's quickly answer electrochemistry. Eh? It's not a lot. Already we did chemical equilibrium, right? We did rates. We thought we did acid and let's answer this. And those of you that were with me today, the only reason I'm doing this is because of thought of this. Okay. Okay. Ah, ah, ah. Eh? Let's start with organic. Okay, this. Uh, uh, you are running away from this thing. Ah, ah, ah. We should start with organic. Okay. Ah? Uh? That we have completed acid and base. Okay, that should not that, that should not disturb your content. <laughs> I noticed just now. I don't know what happened. 
I know what happens. I did that something must have happened but anyway it doesn't matter okay guys quickly um when it comes to organic chemistry again i think in every class i've done today i have tried to okay so we said we should start with organic right all right uh one hour or so organic chemistry then we go to electrochem I'm only going to give you note on what organic reactions again. It's something we all know, so there's no need to waste time. I answer on the board. Is that okay? Or on one board. What do we know? Saturated, saturated what? Write this quickly. Or oh, you don't need to write. You know this. Saturated to unsaturated would give me what? Uh, what do we have? Unsaturated to saturated will give us what? Right? I was single and I was seriously searching where I went to the United States of America and loving smooth yellow bone called Sue. Sue. That's Sue Baby. And then what happened to Sue, Baby, and I? We got married, okay? But here, we now say instead of words, we are going to use the word said. Strong what? Acid or base. I'm sure you can even teach this thing now, the way you've heard this over and over again. All right? Example, H2SO4. N-A-O-H, let's just keep it simple. K-O-H. What type of reaction is that? Elimination. And if I am eliminating, guys, we're not playing. We have to come strong. What type of heat are we using? Strong what? Heat. If I'm then using dilute, strong what? Base. What type of reaction would it be? Substitution. Is that okay? And what do we need? Mild heat. Guys, you can now answer all of this. That's the first part. Make sense? What are the other conditions? If I am working with hydrogenation, is what? Platinum or nickel? I am working with halogenation. My catalyst will be sunlight or UV. Are we okay there? What's next? Okay. Bef no. Um, hydration. Alkene. Hydration. I have alkene reacting. No, we are adding, not reacting. Now we are adding because it's an addition reaction. This gives us what? Alcohol. But in the presence of phosphoric what? acid. We can also use this though. But we can also use HCl. Alkene plus water would give us alcohol. Since we are adding water, it's what? Hydration. You sent me a voice note. Hydrolysis is substitute. That's the difference. Hydrolysis has to do with what? Substitution. Hydration has to do with addition. We okay? All right. Combustion reaction. Alkane, alkene, alkyne, alcohols. All of these will react with oxygen. And when we say react with oxygen, it means they are 
burning. And that will give us what? Carbon dioxide plus water. Are we together, guys? You can just rewrite all of this. You just see chemistry, just pa, 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 you know, just be getting your marks. I don't want to give you this t-shirt is you'll be tempted to wear it tomorrow like this it's hot you know you'll be your uniform it's hot it's hot but you are looking inside it's hot it's hot I'm checking answers one of your invigilators okay tell them but the most the common one here is alkane plus what oxygen to so give me what carbon dioxide and water. Can we quickly take an example to balance? All right, let's quick, can I, can I move? I want to take us an example. Uh, let's look at butane, for example. H what? C4H10, am I right? Yeah, C4H what? 10 plus oxygen. To give us what? Carbon dioxide and water. Someone sent me a voice. I should remind them of how this is done, on how to balance. Yeah, please don't waste time on. Don't waste time on counting. Uh, I want to send this little clip. To this person. All right, guys, what do we do? We uh, balance. How do we balance? Quickly. Right, we put a two here. Don't ask me why. Okay. <laughs> why? It's to make balancing very easy for you on this particular reaction. Don't go to every reaction and be putting two. Okay, ah, it works nicely. So every reaction, two, two. No, this one just makes it work easily. Times four. Already when I put the four, two there, I'm saying there are eight carbon atoms, right? So what is two times four? Eight. I'm going to transfer that eight here. Ready? My carbon is done. What's the next number? Ten. Ten tells me I have twenty oxygen atoms. Oh, sorry, hydrogen atoms. I just copy and paste because this two is already here. Ten. What do I do? Ten. Now we add the number of oxygens. Eight times two, sixteen. Plus what? Ten. That will give me what? 26, 20, divided by 2, 13, and we are done. Another one quickly. C3, H8, plus O2. Can we walk very fast here? Six seconds. Seven. Can we try? What's the first step? Two. Two times three, six. What happens to that eight? Copy and paste. Six times two, 12, plus eight, 20, divided by two. 10 but the problem here they are all what even numbers so what do i do divide by two so what would this be that would go away right so let's clean that what would it be? 10 divided by two would give us what five Six divided by two would give us what three and eight divided by two would give us what four get your marks one on the left one on the right one for balancing the last one for fun let's just have it for fun right Eight, let's test your maths. Eight, eight times two, 16, plus two, 18. Same plus two, CNH2N plus two. Plus what? Oxygen to give us CO2 plus H2O. You want to work with me the maths? Math in the head. Two times eight, 16. What's the next number? 18. And paste, ta ta. 16 times two, Plus 18, 50, divided by 2, 25, done. So 
that is combustion what reaction i want to do a few more things here and then we answer questions on the whole reaction are, we, are you with me good so this was just examples um what is it i want to do cracking 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 uh what should i do with cracking cracking okay let me put it up here cracking there are two types of cracking please learn the definition of what cracking it is the breaking down of what long hydrocarbons or large molecules of hydrocarbons into what simpler usable unit please go and learn the definition there's nothing i can do it's there on the definition sheet it's where we break a hydrocarbon down a long one into what simpler smaller usable units there are two ways of cracking which are talk to me thermal and what catalytic if it is thermal what are the conditions high what heat and high pressure if it's catalytic what do we need we need a catalyst here are the reactions you should be expecting you can take an alkane break it into a smaller alkane and what an alkene for example let's try ch818 examiner then says this would give you c o h10 plus x what is x huh hydrogen halogen Okay, don't let's use X. Okay, I, I see what you're confused because, okay, let's use P. I, I gave it the formula on top there. And all you are doing is you're just what? Balance. You're counting. That's all. I have eight. I've already used four. How many carbons are remaining? Four. Subtracting. I have 18. I've already used 10. How many are remaining? We are done there. And that's an alkene simple this one is playing child please playing games all right the second possible one alkane can then give you what alkene plus another alkene plus hydrogen let's take the same compound c8h18 to give me c4h8 plus q plus h2 let me change i don't want to use c4h18 what is q as if it's heavy it's like I, it's like you're doing sign and cos so you the time frame of your response it's like you are saying sine divided by cos divided by that you find the square root it doesn't take so long come on eight minus three five or it yeah and then 18 minus six 12. is uh 18 minus okay 18 minus six 12 minus that other two there right because of the hydrogen 10. do you see it's an alkene and it's an alkene Find this in multiple choice now. Finally, bromine water. Bromine. This is used to differentiate. There's a little experiment I have here. I hope I can check. Oh, no, I don't have my hard drive. Differentiate between saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbon can somebody define what hydrocarbon is for me all right compounds that consist of what carbon and hydrogen atoms 
only. An unsaturated hydrocarbon decolorizes bromine water. from brown colorless there's a little i have if you remind me later unsaturated hydrocarbon decolorizes what bromine water but if i have a saturated hydrocarbon there is no color what change means brown because bromine water is actually what brown in brown bromine brown i'm not saying the reason brown is because of the name though I'm just saying Get all of this. Can we answer questions now? I'm tired of notes. I've summarized, guys. I've summarized. Oh, the only thing is to remind you of the Markovnikovs. Markovnikovs. You use Markovnikov when you are adding carbon atoms with more hydrogen gets the hydrogen. Is that okay? Huh? Yeah, the rich gets richer. So I already have two hydrogens. It means I can take care of hydrogens. Can I? Can you give me one more? Because I've shown that I can take care. Is that making sense? The rich gets what? Richer. The poor gets what? Poor. You don't have. We punish you for not having. It's scriptural. Very scriptural. Okay. It's scriptural. <laughs> I should keep quiet now. Scriptural. Okay, guys, let's answer questions. How do we quickly? Let's run. I need you here, guys. Are you okay with the content summary so far? Let's answer questions. Everybody, let's look at this one. The flow diagram below shows how compound P can be converted to organic compounds Q and R. Mm. Please, everyone, on your own, Give me the name of compound P. Draw the structure and give me a name. Quickly. Don't let's waste time. You're not calculating things now. Draw the structure and give me the name. Are we done? Please, it's not something hectic. We draw and we name. Dash, what's the name you have? Oh. So, so, ask keys and then you continue with the error. All right. Are we able to get, did you get the name? Okay. Did you get it? Let's draw. Let's draw. Zwa, I'm going to make sure you stand. Okay. 
Yes. Yes. Same amount with which you've been talking. Br. What do we have? CH2, right? Everybody? Are we okay there? What's the next one? CH2. What's the next one? CH3. Somebody wants to help me with this name. It is what? 2 dash bromo pentane. Lovely. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, let's see something. We have reaction one. Please watch this. Is it saturated or unsaturated? It is saturated. Is it a hydrocarbon? No. Why not? It has bromine. Okay, lovely. Look at reaction one. What do you see? Alcohol. Is it saturated? Yes. Hydrocarbon? No. Wait. Saturated to saturated. What type of reaction? We are already done, guys. It's substitution. What are the reaction conditions for substitution? I need what? Dilute strong base and mild heat. I want us to quickly write the whole reaction here. Check. I, we, I'm not even reading the question. I'm just answering. So we have this. Is that fine with you guys? We are now reacting this with what? Dilute strong what? Base. Which one should we use? We can use dilute sodium what? Hydroxide. Or we can use dilute what? KOH. What's happening? It is what? Substi. What are we substituting? Talk to me quickly. What are we substituting? We are going to substitute this BR. With what? Talk to me now. Jelene, you guys are talking at the back there. What I substituted with? With OH. Substitution means what? The trade places. So what are we going to have? H, C, is a BR now. What do you have? No, no, no. That's the first one, right? So carbon. Instead of now bromine, what do we have? OH. Carbon atoms? Five, right? Okay. Guys, what's next though? You notice we are now substituting, but this is the OH and put there. The BR comes there and take the other place. So what do we have? Plus what? NA BR. Done. Did that make sense? Did that make sense, guys? It's as simple as that. Identify the type. Is it saturated? Is it unsaturated? Next one. Let's look at reaction. Oh, by the way, what, what is it, my reaction condition here? We're saying what? Mild what? Heat. Let's look at the next one. What is reaction two? NABR plus H2O. It means we are removing elimination and to remove what do i need i love this question i want to show you some the way that we are we are right we are doing the exact same thing we are doing this exact same check ta 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 five ah now i have what six please if you understand this we can then move to the next question what is this? H. Hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. Now, what are we using? We are eliminating, right? What should we use? Entrated. Same thing. But what? Strong what? Heat. Now, let's eliminate. What are we eliminating, guys? Talk to me. Eliminating what? Br. Zytef now. We now check not on carbon 2 anymore. We check the next carbon close by. Is that okay? And punish the one that is not going to work. I only have 10 rand. 
what if I take transport and I don't get work, then I don't come back home? We say, okay, you don't, you don't have sense. Go to town first. You'll find a way back home. So we punish him for not having enough. Make sense? Which carbon are we going to deal with? Is it, let's label it, carbon one, two, three, four, and five. Where are we going to remove the hydrogen? Carbon three. Why? Carbon three has two hydrogens. Carbon one has what? Three. We remove one that has less. That goes away. So, can we write the structure now? One, two, three. One, two, three, right? Carbon two now has only one what? Hydrogen. Carbon three has one hydrogen. One, two. There we go. And there we go. But something double bond missing. Where would it be? Between carbon? Carbon two and three. Are you seeing the way chemistry can be done? Nice. But something is wrong. Are you aware that we removed HBr, right? Okay, so we're saying minus HBr. But remember, there's what? Guys, are you aware that this is an acid? And that is what? What are they going to form? Salt and water. Ah, that is the water we have. And we still have NaBr. The first one is what? Substitution. And the second one is what? Elimi. What is the reaction condition difference? For elimination, concentrated. Do you see that the only thing I was working with? This is too powerful. Let's answer these questions now. Let's see. Name of the type of substitution. Okay, it is substitution. What are we substituting? That. So what do we call it? It's hydrolysis. Because we are removing BR. Is that fine? Okay. Number two, IOPAC name of R. What's the name of that alcohol? Acetate. Huh? What is the name? Propan two. Please make sure the N is there. Bro, Sorry, Pentan. Uh, relax. Yes. People want to eat you up, hey? Yeah. <laughs> come, baby, come down. What? Pentan. I know my work. Is this a primary, secondary, or tertiary alcohol? Why is it secondary? Is the carbon atom that is bonded to the OH group is bonded to what? Two carbon atoms. Make sense? Please, let's be careful with the answers, right? Lovely. Okay. Um, next question. For reaction two, one reaction, one reaction condition other than heat. What do we know? Concentrated strong base structural formula of compound q did we do it yes what did we use to get the major product the zytev rule compound r can be converted to q sweet now check we are now here what is compound q it's what unsaturated right now we are moving from what saturated to unsaturated what are we using so what type of reaction is that my dear and we are going from here to here right what should we remove Where the two what's the difference oh guys this is the difference between the two that That's the difference between the two. So what should we remove? Water. 
Let's remove water. Okay. Now, how do we remove water? Guys, anytime you want to eliminate, please use acid or base. Make sense? To remove. Every, even check esterification. If you check esterification, are you aware that we are removing water? Because you are extracting that H2O. And what are you using to extract it? Sulfuric what? And not just sulfuric acid. Concentrated sulfuric. So every time you want to eliminate water, bring in a concentrated what? Acid or base. Formula or name of the inorganic. We can use any concentrated. We can even use SO4. Make sense? We can even use what? Sodium, as long as it is what? Concentrated. Type of reaction? Elimination. Type of elimination? Dehydration, because you are removing water. Oh. Oh, sweet. Check this quickly. Check this. A mixture of ethanoic acid and propan one oil is heated in the presence of... We spoke about this just now, 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 now. A water bath. What do we have? It's alcohol plus carboxylic acid. You know this, right? Okay, I didn't write this there. But you know it is what? Ace. And you cannot eat ace without what? Water. What are we saying? Alcohol plus carboxylic acid would plus what? Esters and what? Chemistry. Imagine. Look at you. Look at you. Huh? Look at Bishop. But is it making sense, guys? Ace and water. Okay, good. But I want you to do something for me. What is the alcohol we have? If I guys, you only have two minutes. Anoic acid, right? And propan one all. Here, you have three minutes. What's going on? It, it's five marks. This. Use structural formula to write this whole reaction. It's five marks. Come, please. Please, 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 please. Uh, two, two. Sorry, sir. Tannoic acid plus propan one all. Quickly. Five marks. Structural formula. <laughs> Ziakal. Are we coloring? Uh, okay. Uh, Come. Which one is for a dose? Wait, so everything is here. Uh, 
One minute and 20 seconds left. Sir. Eh? What? Sorry, my job is to fix the mess. Those of us at home, everything all right? You guys look too quiet for me. Come on, man. Uh... <laughs> You got this. Okay. <laughs> you can just draw. If you can draw the alcohol and the carboxylic acid, draw the functional group close to each other and remove water. That's all. Draw the two compounds. Is that what you did? No. Make sure they are close together. No. Oh, uh, okay. Could be. How many carbon atoms do you have there? No, but you're not. You see, you're going to lose math. Draw. You need to draw the structural formula of ethanoic. Draw the structural formula of propan one all. Like everything, that's five marks. Okay, green, 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 green. Okay, what do we have? We have what? Ethanoic plus propan one or let's quickly do it together. F, F is what? How many carbon atoms? Two. Prop is what? Three. Okay, so ethanoic acid. Let's be very fast on this. Ethanoic what? Acid plus propan one what all let's draw ethanoic acid c c double bond o h is that fine with you plus propanol how many carbon atoms three one two three o and h Guys, are we together? Is it making sense? Good. But we know water must be produced here, right? So what do we do? Can we extract water? Too easy. Where's water? Cut this guy out. That's water. What do we have left? What do we have left? C. Here we have what? Our H, H, H. What do we have here? A double bond. Now we've removed that. Can we join it with that O? Lovely. Then we have what? C, C, C. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. And then you start from naming from the alcohol side, guys. It's alcohol plus carboxylic acid to give us what? Water. Alcohol starts the whole thing, and I have water. So what's the name? It's propan one or that's the alcohol. So it's going to be what? Propyl ether no eight. Good question. If they give you an ester, how do you know which one is the carboxyl? This oxygen is the link between.
bash it into two. Ta. Fine. So you slash it into two. Already you know this is one side, this is one side. It's alcohol and carboxylic what? Carboxylic acid that has the double bond. So this is your carboxylic side. That, that, is that fine? So your carboxylic is what? Two. The double bond is on the carboxylic side. So join the two together. Maintain the name, the acronym ACE. Start naming from the alcohol side. If you can do this, it's five marks. Right. It's five, I promise. This is five marks. No, five. Uh uh. Not even three and a half, not four and a half. Five. And it's not six. Write down the name of the reaction that takes place. Esterification. All right. So we all know that. Esterification. Esterification. Can I ask you a question? How do you know an ester is formed? Present smell in the room. Esther has a characteristic pleasant what smell. So in an experiment, how do you know it is formed? You start to smell that this room smells nice. If at that point somebody suzes, please, it's not an Esther. <laughs> That's not pleasant. There's nothing. <laughs> There's not a suze is not a pleasant smell. What was that? What did I do? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you guys did not do what you are doing. Okay, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. In the experiment you did, was there something oily on the water? Then there's no experiment. You didn't get an Esther. <laughs> guys one thing you observe esters are oily you remember oil and water do not mix right so when an ester is formed you would see oil on the water so if there's no oil you only have water <laughs> okay <laughs> so two things oil on water pleasant smell are we okay all right give a reason why the mixture is heated in a water bath alcohol is highly flammable you cannot heat alcohol over naked flame okay alcohol is highly what flammable uh ricardo okay i don't want to check you said your teacher lied i don't know no guys it's, you guys don't listen that you see i see that you don't listen what, what did I say is five marks? When they ask you to write a balanced equation. Are you writing balanced here, child? Write the structural formula and IOPAC name for four marks. What is the structural formula? You are just writing this and you are writing the IOPAC name. For, do you notice that this one here, two marks. This one here, two marks. Now, if you write the whole thing, one, two, three. Do you see the five marks? One for ethanoic, one for propan one or one for water, two for the ester, five marks. For the answer of this one, no. It says write down the structural formula and IOPAC name of the product form. Oh yeah, please write water because there's English problem here. There are two products. So, so write water there as well. But generally they are looking for the ester because it says IOPAC what name? International Union of Pure Applied. Okay. 
Tell us it makes you nasty. <laughs> guys, do you did what we just did make sense to you guys? Okay. Let's try. Uh, let's try this one. Let's try this one. Okay, guys. We don't even know what the question is. I'm not going to write as much as I wrote the first time. But let's see. The flow chart below shows the preparation of various organic compounds using but one in as a starting what material where's but one in there okay reaction one guys the, do you notice this is an alkene and it is what unsaturated if we add hbr what type of reaction is this it's now going to be what addition what reaction ah let's see we're supposed to use Markovnikovs here let's do it Markovnikovs. So what is but one in? Uh, but one in plus HPR. Come, people. But one in. Are we fine with the but? One would be there, right? Okay. Please, so you count. We could make mistakes. A but one in. Plus what? H B R. What are we going to get? Additional reaction, right? First, let's write this whole thing without adding anything. One, two, three, four. Pa 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 pa. Ta ta. Hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. All right. This is where we are adding stuff. Where does hydrogen go to? Carbon one or two? One. The rich get. Let's make that error. Make sense? The rich, because we only have spots one and two. Spot one, the guy has what? Two hydrogen. Spot two, the guy has what? One hydrogen. The rich gets richer so hydrogen goes there and br goes here does that make sense to you, everybody okay all right um we are done with addition reaction now check they said whatever we got here which is now what a saturated then reacts with what sodium hydroxide i cannot do anything here right now why i don't know if it's concentrated or dilute get my idea right if it's concentrated it's going to be elimination if it's dilute it's going to be substitution he wants to ask me to give the phone then he saw my face <laughs> <laughs> when he saw that I looked, he changed the conversation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Guys, are you okay with that? We'll check what the question wants, whether it is what they want, um, that they're giving us concentrated or dilute we'll see reaction two this saturated compound then reacts with water do you see what it's a substitution why alcohol is also what saturated guys do you see the sss su -E usa we took all of that thing yes yeah so what Unfortunately, nay. Okay. All right, come, come, guys. No, it took me a lot. I sat down to see how to make this thing easy. And I tested it over and over again before throwing it out there. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. At least I know that I am part of uh, the success in South Africa. <laughs> okay. 
I can boldly say, you know. All right, but are we okay? Saturated, saturated, substitution. Is it making sense? Now, what is this? Unsaturated to saturated. What are we doing? Addition. But do you notice an alcohol? What are we adding? We are now adding what? Water. This is hydration. I'm glad this question actually shows us the difference between the two. One is hydrolysis. Reaction two is what? Hydrolysis. Is that fine? Because it is substitution. Yes, Tutu, what's the problem? What's the difference? One is reaction with. One is addition. Reaction with saturated to saturated. Addition unsaturated to saturated. Guys, um, I'm not going to waste time to look at the questions here. I'm sure we've actually checked. This structural formula to write down reaction one that we even did without even without stressing. Write down the name of the type of reaction that occurs when but one in is converted to X. Uh, what is that X again? Where do we answer it? What type of reaction is that? Addition. Or what type of addition reaction? Hydro halogenation. H for hydro. Br for halo. So it is hydro halogenation. All right. Write down the structural formula and IOPAC name of the secondary alcohol. I'm sure you can do that because what we're doing now, okay, let's do that. This is what? Addition. We are now using what? Markovnikovs. Oh, we did Markovnikov just now, didn't we? Are you aware that it's going to be the exact same thing? Yeah. It's going to be what? OH. Do you see it's secondary already? Great. Chemistry. Can we move on to One in can be converted directly to secondary alcohol, this is an alkene, without the formation of intermediate product X top of a catalyst. I gave you this note on its own. Alkene plus water would give us what? Alcohol in the presence of phosphoric acid. It's there. I remember. Check. Check. Have you found it? No, it's just now, now, now. It's the notes we're writing just now. Just like now, 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 now. It's there. It's there. Present. Let's see. Uh, where's the notes? Have we written so much? Oh, um, ah. Uh, Penna. There we go. Alkene plus water would give us what? alcohol in the presence of what phosphoric acid everything is there guys yeah. all right guys i think we can now go into let's let's look at one question on molecular mass one question question two and then we finish up with organ um electrochemistry which which has to do with the stoichiometry okay those of us that were with me this morning yeah we did a bit of stoichiometry what is this um Instead of using water as a reactant, okay, check this. Instead of using water as a reactant in reaction two, concentrated sodium hydroxide. You remember we said we couldn't answer because it could go either way. Now, do we still need to go and waste time? No. Since it's con elimination or substitution, elimination, we are done there. Yes. Organic reactions, can we safely say we're good? to an extent all right let's look at this one quickly let's look at this one um this is boiling point and melting point compound a to c are used to investigate a factor that influence um boiling what are the factors that influence boiling point guys uh -uh. factors that influence boiling point come on Yes, factors that Tuto, why are you looking at me as if I'm speaking gibberish? Boiling point. What are the things that influence boiling point? 
Number one, the type of intermolecular force. And you know, we have London. What else? Dipole squared. And then what? Hydrogen bond. Which one is the strongest? The strongest there. And which one is the weakest? Good. We're done there. I'm going to shock you again today. That when you, when you guys answer this question, again, just at the same time when I developed that um, SSSUE, I have a document where I developed this thing. Fine. Identify the type of intermolecular. Compare the strength of the intermolecular, the energy of the intermolecular, and then you make conclusions. That people take intellectual property and not acknowledge where it came from. <laughs> but as long as you guys are, as long as you guys are passing, it's my joy. You know, I just laugh when. Okay, quickly, we're looking at what? We're looking at the factors, right? That's number one. Number two, what else? The type of structure. Is that okay? The type of structure. Um, straight chain hydrocarbon. Straight chain hydrocarbon have what? Longer or not longer. Larger what? Surface area. That's fine. Then what? The branched one. Branched what? Chain. These ones are spherical in shape. And what do we know? The long chain ones would have what? A high boiling point. Large what? Surface area. The position of the functional group position of the what functional what group what do i mean when the functional group is on the terminal carbon let me put a note down there quickly um compounds with functional group compounds functional group on the terminal carbon. Terminal carbon simply means carbon number what? One. Because it's the one at the end, carbon one. Have high boiling point because the Strong intermolecular force is exposed. I bet you if you check something right now, if you check butan one or let me check on my other system. Q, Regan. All right, guys, I really want to check something for you. Boiling point of butan one all. If I am checking on my... Uh, the boiling point of butane one all is ta, 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 ta. okay. It gives me I want you to see that it it will not make sense if you are if you don't understand what I'm just saying. Because if I look at butane one all and butane two all, they have the same number of um, they have the same intermolecular, excuse me, intermolecular force. 
they have the same molar mass everything is the same the only thing different is what the position they are positional isomers all right boiling point of butane one all is 117,7 117,7 and butane two all is 100 isomers but what do you know about butane one all the hydroxyl group is on carbon number one it's on the terminal carbon so we say that the intermolecular force is exposed take note it will also affect um also affect what it will also affect boiling point is that okay all right um what else can i give you we've spoken about everything is right here now everything is right and we know that if a compound has a high boiling point it must have a low vapor breath. please don't say they are inversely proportional they are not oh. what's wrong <laughs> said that please they are not they are not it's just that when one increases the other one decreases okay guys let's quickly answer this i don't want to waste time compound a to c are used to investigate a factor that's, that influences boiling point of organic compounds now guys always check for what is kept constant look at the first one propan one all second one butan one all third one pentan one what do you notice they are all alcohols so what are we keeping constant the functional group or you can write the homologous what series now what is that is our controlled what variable and that what make the experiment fair what are we changing by the way prop butte paint what's changing number of carbon atoms that's one or you can say chain length because the, as you add carbons, it be, it's becoming what? Longer. Can we define boiling point? What is it? All right, beautiful. At least two marks. The temperature at which vapor pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure. Let me knock you now. Define vapor pressure. Ah, uh ah. -uh. <laughs> <laughs> it is the pressure exerted by the vapor on the liquid in a closed container at equilibrium come on please let's get that let's get that vapor pressure is the pressure that the vapor this one is coming out tomorrow Well, I just, if you want to hear me, if you don't want to, you can. Huh? Just learn it. It is the pressure that the vapor exerts on the liquid, all right, in a closed system at equilibrium. It is the pressure exerted by the vapor on its liquid in a closed container or system at equilibrium okay i move on guys i have answered 3.2.1 and 3.2.2 3.2.1 independent what we are changing what are we changing chain length or number of carbon what at do you know we can also say molecular mass any of the three would work well let's write the answers chain length uh we're saying chain length number of Carbon what? Atoms. Did I say just now again? <laughs> <laughs> Molecular mass. <laughs> so whatever we are changing becomes the independent what? Variable. What is the control? What is kept constant? Which is what? The homologous. Or functional what group let's run this up quickly 
Name the intermolecular force that is responsible for the observed trend. These are alcohols. What is it? Hydrogen bond. Beautiful. Yeah, we just recall now. Hydrogen bond. The bonding, boiling point of the three of them are given. Or boiling point of branched three high alcohols are given below. Which one of the three temperatures is most likely to be the boiling point of two methyl but one or first thing is i am going to count how many carbon atoms do i have here i'll build one all that's five so i am make sense but i know i actually answered this just a while ago that straight chain would have a higher boiling point because of the larger surface area. The boiling point of pentan one all should be higher than two methyl what? Is that are you there? So if the boiling point of pentan one all is 138, definitely I know it cannot be 149. Pentan one all should have a higher what boiling point than that. 149 is way higher than that one. Secondly, I look at two methyl butan one or and compare it with butanol. Do you notice there's butan one or butan one or there? But the two methyl tells me that the molar mass has increased. Boiling point of two methyl butan one or should be greater than butan one or. So it is between butan one or and pentan one or. Which number is in between? Do you understand the analysis? I compared butan, methyl butan one, or that's a branched hydrocarbon, compared it to the original uh, pentan one all, and said it must be lesser than that. But it must be greater than butan one all. Why? Because it has a higher molecular what? Mass. Right. Fully explain your answer. I am done. What do you do? You compare it to butan one all. You compare it to pentan one all. Make sense, guys? Oh, Max, there. Graphs. Oh, check. Three point six point one. Now, so. <laughs> all right. The graph below represents the relationship between vapor pressure and temperature of um, propan 1 and propanal. Let's quickly look at that before we even look at the graph. Propan 1 all and propanal. What can you tell me about propanal and propan 1 all? Here we have what? Dipole, dipole. Here we have what? Hydrogen. Which one has a higher boiling point? And one all because of the hydrogen. But the higher the boiling point, the lower the vapor pressure. So, which one has a high vapor pressure here? Is it P or Q? P has a high what? Vapor pressure. It means it has what? A low boiling point. Are you seeing the analysis, guys? If it's a low boiling point, it has to be what? Dipole, dipole. Which curve P or Q represent the graph of propan one all? It's explain your answer by referring to what? The type of intermolecular force. First, what do you do? Identify, which we have done. How did we identify? Propan one hull has hydrogen, propanal has dipole dipole identify. Hydrogen bond is stronger than dipole dipole. Number three, energy required. The energy required to overcome the hydrogen bond is more than the energy required to overcome the dipole dipole. Therefore, the boiling point of propan one all is greater than the boiling point of propanal, which means 
the vapor pressure of a propane one less than guys check your four marks look at you negative marking yes if you say q forget <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our answer here is what? Q. Guys, did it make sense to you? Please, let's enjoy the answering of the questions, the right line. Don't write too many stories. Write in bullet forms. Okay, are we good? Yeah. All right. Eh? No essays. Okay, uh, quickly, may I ask you to answer this one for me, please, everybody. How many marks here? At least one, two, three, four, five, six. It's six plus three, nine. You have five minutes. Five minutes. You put me? Five. Five minutes, ten seconds. No, don't worry. The clean team, I'll, I'll see what to do with it. Come, guys. Time, 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 time. Time, Alan. Time. Start with organic, finish it, please. Come, 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 time, time. You have four minutes and 13 seconds left. That's you okay. So guys, this, this, this session is going to be available online before you get home. A lot of things that I didn't write, just rewatch again and just listen. Let me try to fix something here.
One minute and 10 seconds left. Oh, out, I did. Grim, 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 grim. All right. Alkyne, triple bond, D. Aloalkane must contain a halogen, F. Has the general formula CnH2n plus 2O, that's B. Just another way of writing alcohol. It should be, I've been written CnH2n plus 1O. H. So they took the H and added it there, which made it A saturated or unsaturated? Unsaturated. It's in. Right? Give a reason for your answer. There's a double bond or just a multiple bonds. Is that okay? Write down the structural formula of C. Were you able to write that down? 2,3 dimethyl pentanoic let's start from pentanoic how many carbon atoms five okay i'm going to make this my carbon number one is that fine with you all right then what do we have carbon one carbon what two and carbon number three it means i have this here for the other one on the other side capacity these things means it they have meanings. There's what you call trans and cis. Side and when they're on opposite sides. But for now, we just ask you to draw. Guys, check. You should be able to get that mark correct there. All right. Structural formula of, oh, that's what we did. IOPAC name of compound D. What is the longest chain? Guys, the longest chain must contain that triple bond. Is that okay? So I would say, this is one, two, that's fine, four, five, six, seven. It's continuous. That is hept. But it is sitting on carbon number what? Three. So what's the name of that thing? Hept three. Hey, okay, guys. Pull me. F3. And guys, if you're not sure, draw it out nicely. It will be very visible. F3 ion. All right, quickly, let's look at this. 2.4. Is B a primary, secondary, or tertiary alcohol? Look at B. Please, everybody, draw it out. Draw it out. Don't, don't guess. Draw out B. Draw out structure B. But it's going to be easy for you to draw it out. Quickly, quickly, quickly. H3. 3COH, CH3, 3COH. Come, let's do it together now. It's C, what did I say again? 
Ah, for me, don't lie to me. CH3. And then there's what? It's three, right? And then CO8. This is very simple. Draw CH3 three times. That's what that's saying. Huh? Am I right? Are you sure? No, no. Let's start from the last part. <laughs> C-O-H. That's fine. Then we have what? CH3. Makes sense, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, how else are you going to draw it? <laughs> what is this? That's CH2. Yeah. But wait, but this is CH2. This is CH2. Do you see any CH2 there? No. Make sense? Guys, if, if you draw it like this, if you draw this CH3, what is this? That's CH2. Make sense? That's not CH3 anymore. So this is a this is a clever examiner here. I'm not rubbing you, Nana, but it is, is it making sense though? All right. Is it a primary, <laughs> primary, secondary, or tertiary? Ah, uh -uh. tertiary. <laughs> she said. Brrr. Guys, is it making sense? The carbon atom connected. I'm glad we're doing some nice stuff here today, eh? So please check. So those of you that had CH, you see, it's no longer CH3 you had. You had CH2, you had CH2. Make sense? Lovely. Um, write down the IOPAC name. Okay, guys. Uh, okay, let's quickly finish that inverter before it goes off and we don't have. Write down the IOPAC name of a chain isomer of compound B. Chain is what are chain isomers? Organic compounds with the same molecular formula but different chain length. Chain isomer of B. All right, guys, chain isomer. Can you then count? This is B, right? Just try to draw this anyhow to have the same number of carbon atoms. That's what we're saying. What you had is a chain isomer. So your CH2, CH2, CH2 now count as what? Uh huh. Please. Please. It makes sense, man. Okay, but guys, can, are we? Are we? Are we okay there? All right. But I'm glad at least you, you are exposed to such lovely ones too. Compound E has a functional isomer. What is compound E, by the way? Compound E. Okay, it's an aldehyde. Why? How do you know it's an aldehyde? It's, it's on the side, CHO. And what is this called? Please take note. This is what? Four mile. Four mile is CHO. That's a very key thing. Most people forget that thing there. But a ketone then has what? Carbonyl. Let, 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 me sh let, me, let me quickly help you with something here. Let me help you with something. When I got married to Sue, honeycomb, chocolate, strawberry, banana, cheese, fruit, salad, cake. All round sweetness. We had a cake and it was a beautiful cake check for our wedding function this is how i normally put it for our wedding function we had what left to me as a man i can walk into shop right and buy a cake. wait people come eat and go leave me in debt 
That's why I don't like parties. They want us to host a party. We all put money together. Yeah, leave your house dirty, dishes all over the place. So I don't host party. So, guys, do you want to come for the party? Bring 200. So, 200, 200. We all buy together. Is that okay? So, for me, I can go to ShopRite, buy the big one. I know they have. No, I go to Pick and Pay. I know they do. Make and then, then you go to shop right by the smaller step <laughs> and then you climb it up <laughs> once but for a woman yo, know, she's going to leave you same day wedding so we decide, i decided to make seven steps to heaven for her but she's when when she saw the cake you know how women are very funny you shouldn't have baby <laughs> Women, you are the best. You give her 500. No, baby, you shouldn't have. You buy a dress. Mara, baby, it's expensive. You shouldn't have. Can we return it since I shouldn't have? <laughs> since I shouldn't have, can we return it then? All right. Bought a cake. Oh, baby, you're the sweetest. You shouldn't have. But she smiled. Check the smile. She gave me a very tiny smile. Then she looked at the cake again and gave me a very big smile. What was she telling me? That functional isomers. Acid will be functional isomers. Aldehyde are functional isomers. Aldehyde and what key tones remember this one is that which is no cho i don't even know how i think about these things oh my but this one is what c o and then we have that right it's sandwich this is what car bore nile please let's take note of them and carboxylic acid Carboxylic acid, what do we have? COOH. What is this called? Carboxyl. And then esters. O, O. And then we have what? A C there. No, that's. Please take note of the functional isomers. Is that okay? Haven't said this, we have actually answered. and we talk about a formal uh, aldehyde and ketones carboxylic acid all i need to do is to count people we just count 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 and that's all chemistry made fun hey yeah. Got it. okay the aim is to make your matric no. exam Easy. Then this one's. Okay, can we move on? Okay, just one sec. All right. Just so the last section now, guys, we answer what electrochemistry. I will be giving you questions to do. The yeah, guys, I think that question has been, okay, all of this, we, we've done, they are repeated, guys. That's one thing I love about chemistry. It's Can we move on from this one? We're done with the functional isomers. All right, quickly, guys. Uh, this is the first question I wanted to do for me on electrochemistry. Please, I wanted to get total. Please get me total. 16, min 16 marks. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. If you do 16 minutes, check how many minutes we have there. 12, 11 minutes maximum. No, no, no.
Kufadia, please get a table from home. You're at home. Guys, just take a screenshot. Those of you at home, those of you online, take a screenshot. I might just um, obstruct your view right now because I just need to save this recording. Uh, there's, there's no electricity. So take a screenshot. All right, all good. What? Did you write down did you write down the notes? <laughs> all right, guys, so at least you all Go to 8.3. That's, that's important to me. All right. Let me quickly assist you here. All right. Um, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way.
you know, I would want to give you a quick, just on that 8.3 part. Watch out for this. The formation of AGCL, BACL2, these two are precipitates. Huh? <laughs> Whose child is that? <laughs> are precipitates. All right. When we say precipitate, we talk about what? Insoluble solids. So the formation of these two and others, but majorly these two, decreases concentration. I'm going to give you a table that you can use. This is what? Concentration. Now we can say, if I have this now, One, two, where this is what? E, cathode, anode, and the, the EMF, or what we know as the what? The E cell. If this value increases, then this one is going to increase. If this value decreases, I'm not going to wait for you before, then this value will what? Decrease. If the value of the E anode increases, L will decrease. If, I once gave you this table. Yes. If this one decreases, then this one increases. Okay. The half cell electrolyte concentration, half cell electrolyte, uh, sorry, electrolyte E potential value. When concentration decreases, concentration decreases, and vice versa. So, what we're saying is, guys, if the concentration decreases, the E value also what decreases. The concentration increases, then the E value will what? increase right when concentration increases the e the potential value increase is that okay when concentration of the cell decreases the electrode potential value also what decreases so all you need to check is is it the cathode or the anode that is increasing or decreasing Can we answer those questions now quickly? Very fast. And if you for guys, listen, you don't need to cram this table. Check how you're going to work it out. Don't cram it. Just you know that what E cell is equal to what? E cathode minus E what? Anode. So put values for yourself. Check what I'm going to do. I am going to say 10 minus eight what is my answer two that's fine now let's increase the cathode value do you remember now if i increase the cathode value to 11 keep the other one constant 11 minus eight what's your answer three do you notice that if this one increases the e cell increase that's the first one Hold on. Let's keep the cathode as 10 and let us decrease the anode to 4. What's your answer? 6. Do you notice this one has decreased? What happened to this value here? It did. So you work it out like that. Be smart. Let's be smart about it. Can we quickly answer this question now? Okay. 
Let's go answer the question now. Are you still writing? Uh, sorry. But this one, hmm, please take note of this one. <laughs> okay, but just take note of it. Let's see, guys, we have very few minutes left. Uh, this is a galvanic cell. What is the energy conversion here? Chemical, ah, uh -uh, chemical to electrical is wrong. Chemical energy to electrical energy. I'm this. I'm not the memo. When you say chemical to electrical, are you aware that I can put words that I can change the whole meaning? I can tell you chemical formula to electrical power. I will not. <laughs> All right, so please let's write it. Let's, I'm just saying, let's write the full thing. Um, I think it's important, guys, before we start, let's quickly look at something here. Why do we have platinum? I did explain this. When do we use platinum? Number one, when you have a gas, when you have a mixture of ions. Do you notice I've got a mixture of ions here? Fe3 plus, and, and that's the one I'm going to be looking for on the table. Makes sense. All right. Uh, tell me which one is the oxidation of cell. You are look, guys. Please, you are looking for. Please look for this value for me, the one that has this equation. This is Fe3 plus, Fe3 plus, and Fe2 plus. What's the value? Value of this. Positive or negative? Okay. And then the other one, AG plus. Guys, I am not answering the questions because I don't have it. I don't want to go and off the screen. I'm just writing what's on the table. What's the value here? Positive. Okay, um, take a picture quickly. Take a picture. Got it now? Sweet. All right. Okay, guys, let's answer this. Oh, time flies. But did you learn quite a few things again today? Let's use the information. Um, which one is the oxidation? Uh, if we use our number line, which I taught you. All right. Uh, what would I have? I'm going to have what? 0.77 will be the first. Uh, yeah. Right? So which one is the anode? So do we all agree that this is the anode side? Deal? And that is the? cathode now examiner says write the half reaction oxidation wait this is the anode right and this is the cathode guys can i answer 8.2.1 very fast now what's my answer oxidation we start from the what right hand side what are we having fe2 plus to give us what fe3 plus 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 e minus cell notation Guys, quickly now, cell notation, where do we start from? It's as simple as A, B, C. But it must start with a solid and end with a solid. So what should I have? Platinum, solid, phase change. Now, it's Fe2+, plus, right? Fe2+, plus, which is what? Aqueous. What's the next thing? Fe3+, plus, which is also what? Please, don't go and do this now. It's wrong. That stroke. <laughs> that stroke is for different what faces but it's the same face so what do i put just a semicolon there that's fine okay 
What's now? This we don't we only put the face change if they are different what faces. Are we okay there? What's next at the cathode? Ag plus, which is what? Aqueous. And then what? Ag, which is what? Solid. We're done there. Guys, two standard conditions. Talk to me. Two standard conditions for the Fe2 plus, Fe3 plus half cell. What's your answer? There's a gas there. So we can use pressure. All right. So we say pressure of what? One atmosphere concentration i'm listening one mole sorry and you lose the whole mark <laughs> temperature what's temperature there 25 degrees celsius or 298 kelvin please don't write conch it has to be what? Concentration. Yes, please ask your ask. Yeah. Come on, it's still correct. It's still correct. All right. Guys, so we could have written any of the three. Ah, no, no. Besides what? Pressure. Pressure, you only write if there is what? A gas. So. The correct one, the correct two would be what? These two. One and two. Are we okay, everybody? Yeah. If you write the three, they mark the first two. So let's know when to write pressure. We only write pressure when there's what? A gas. All right, guys. What did you get for 8.3? 8.3, quickly. I'm not going to calculate that. No comma. Now know that there's votes there. Now, guys, <laughs> 8.4, quickly, 8.4. It says, what would happen to the EMF calculated in question 8.3 if Please take note. Check what's going to happen. You have Na plus and what? Cl minus. The cations will go to the cathode and the anions will go to the anode. That cations, right? But fine. The cations will go to the cathode. Guys, are you sure that this thing is called the anode and cathode? Are you sure? I think I know what the examiner wants to aim at. They are giving me the right values as well. One second. Uh, you gave me 0, 0.77, right? Okay. And then you gave me silver. Silver is 0, 0.8. Okay, all right. So what are we, uh, let's look at what's going to happen. We're saying the cations would go to the anode. Which ones are the cations? The positive ones, right? So these would come. That's fine. And then this will come what? There. Are you with me there? All right. So it means, just want to check something. On the left-hand side, we are going to have sodium ions there. And on the right-hand side, we are going to be forming iron chloride. Is that okay? We're going to be forming what? Iron chloride. Uh, one second. Sorry, just one second. All right. Okay, good.
All right. Now, um, here, please listen. What the examiner wanted us to, guys, we make it. We let, I want us to conclude this. This question is similar to one other question that was asked. What the examiner was aiming at here, I want to tell you, examiner was aiming at you getting silver chloride. That's not going to be possible here. I think they made a little error there. They wanted CL to come inside here. On what? Silver chloride. Because silver chloride is insoluble. That's the aim of this. Right? So, yeah. Um, I noticed there was, there was an errata on this thing. It's from Eastern Cape. So it, it we'll answer it like this now. What does to answer it like this? Is that okay? What would happen to the EMF if a solution of sodium chloride were used to the salt bridge in this? Uh, what's happening here? CL comes to this side, right? And then what? NA comes there. The thing would remain what? The same. Why? Both salts are soluble. Is that okay? Both are soluble because have sodium nitrate there which is soluble and we're going to have iron chloride there which is also what soluble look one minute so i'll tell you what let me quickly show you what the examiner wanted here please quickly um electrolytic cell you can go do that at this this is what the examiner wanted we have silver nitrate right Please, I want you to listen carefully. No distraction now. Here, this is silver chloride. If I then use AgNO3, I would have Ag plus and NO3 minus. This is actually the cathode, if you do this question. But anode. The cations will come towards the cathode. Do you notice you're going to have what? Ag plus. You're going to have what? Ag plus plus Cl minus, and that will give us what? AgCl. What is this? This is what? Insoluble. That's what they were aiming at. And when we form that, automatically, this means that the chloride ion concentration does what? Decreases. And that is the cathode. It therefore means that the concentration of the cathode does what? Decreases. It means that the electrode potential of the cathode half cell will what? Decrease. What will happen to the EMF of the cell? What? Decrease as well. That's what they were aiming at in that question. They mixed, I think they chose the wrong um, compound have made that uh, silver point to be there is it anode yes so that the cl goes in there the aim please i hope you get it the aim was to form what silver chloride that's what they were aiming for and i know that this one is the cathode so i'm going to form ag cl which is insoluble once i form an insoluble substance the will what decrease then you go to that table to say oh if the cathode decreases the emf will decrease remember you can use numbers to play around with it guys i know i've taken your time but please if there's any other question here i'll send you uh whatever memos that i have please go and look at this we did this chloride check your notes it's all the everything is there if you take the note i gave you instead of taking note is there those of you that were with me earlier on today as well we did so to the answer the question they're going to ask you is 9.4.2 give a reason why sodium metal cannot be formed at q water is a stronger 
oxidizing agent then sodium ions so uh, this is what you're going to have we are going to have at the cathode you're going to have what two cl minus to give us what c s plus what two have water being reduced plus what um hydrogen gas plus what 2oh guys can we write the net ionic equation here so, electrons to electrons we just write it minus plus 2h gas plus what h2 plus how do you know gases are formed Bob guys uh we are all exhausted now at, at this point the voice note for you all right guys i hope that this session has at least added one or two uh why all right i'm being accused here yeah? Are we using blue? It has a high frequency. <laughs> I know. Half love. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, good luck. Good luck. Please, I am going to I'm going to upload. You can rewatch. No, leave it. Leave it. I am going to so you can rewatch. Have a lovely evening, everybody, and uh, keep well. Bye, guys. No class this week, please. Yes. I'm not promising that. Good night, everybody. Good night, good night, good night. Tato.